40% of people are thought to have insulin resistance, but of these 104 million Americans, 80% of them just have no idea. They're just walking around. So today we're going to go over the five signs your body's trying to tell you that you have insulin resistance. If you stick around to the end, we're going to take a look at a lab review so we can look at all the different markers that we quantify this. We can look at the severity of insulin resistance and how we use GLP-1 and lifestyle modification to help somebody reverse this for good. Two real quick notes first. One is, is what's in it for you? Like, why should you care if you're insulin resistant or not? And then two, I want to make sure you understand what insulin resistance is, just very simply put. So why should you care? We'll start with that. If you are struggling to lose weight, then it is for one of like five or six different reasons. One of them is insulin resistance, where the body is basically having to produce more and more insulin from your pancreas to help you reabsorb glucose from your bloodstream. The higher the blood sugar goes up more often, the higher the likelihood that your body is going to have to produce more and more insulin to keep up. Now, these receptors, they just stop listening at some point. And this is going to push you further and further towards diabetes. We care about this for your longevity because most Americans die from cardiovascular disease. So we don't want you developing plaque in your arteries and we know this process pushes you closer to that. But in the short term, what it's gonna do, it's gonna make it very difficult for you to lose weight. Simply put, it'll slow your metabolism down and start messing with your hormone production. And these are two things that we just absolutely cannot have when you're trying to lose weight. So the first sign that you have insulin resistance is simply that you feel exhausted after meals. This is really important for those of you who have that 1, 2, 3 p.m. crash after lunch during your workday, and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what's different with me now, but I'm so tired after I eat in the middle of the day. I feel like I need to take a nap. This is a sign of inappropriate blood glucose metabolism where you're getting a crash in your blood glucose due to the level of insulin resistance that's there. And it isn't just about carbohydrates. It's your cells that are struggling to use insulin properly. And it's a clue that your metabolism is off. The second tip that your body is trying to give you if there's insulin resistance is that you are craving sugar excessively even right after you eat. So you eat till you're full and then your body is craving sugar. This usually means that one, you have a GLP-1 deficiency that we've seen. Two, there's likely insulin resistance that's taking place. So the brain is starved for fuel despite plenty of blood glucose in the blood. And it's surprising because people assume that the cravings equal lack of willpower, but it's really just the physiology. It's what's happening in your body that's making you crave the sugar. There's nothing wrong with you. Like you haven't, you don't just have a lack of willpower now in relation to how you were when you were 20. It's actually what's happening biologically with your digestive system, your blood sugar, and your neurochemistry as a result. The third sign is weight gain specifically around the belly. If you never had a belly before and you're gaining weight right in the tummy and you feel like you're getting that tire, then that is a sign of insulin resistance. If you're finding yourself in the gym, working out, doing everything that you know that used to work in the past, but you're still developing belly fat, this is insulin resistance and it needs to be addressed. I'm not gonna make this its own category, but it, if you've heard the word skinny fat before, where you're technically skinny or you might be like in your weight range, but you just don't have much muscle, this is also a sign of insulin resistance. And I really do urge you to get your blood tested so you can tell definitively what's going on in your body. Number four is brain fog. There's a lot of things that can cause brain fog, but insulin resistance is almost always involved. Hormone abnormalities are a big cause of brain fog. And most people are thinking to themselves, it's probably my thyroid. They're not really connecting it back to their metabolism and the way that their body is digesting food. So high insulin means blood sugar swings, and this is what impairs cognition. If your blood sugar is all over the place, You'll find yourself being very, very forgetful. This is also often accompanied by a large level of inflammation. Your blood sugar is going to cross the blood-brain barrier. Your brain is using sugar. So if you're having these crazy swings up and down, it's going to impact your brain health. Now, there's a couple other sneaky things that you might be thinking is just normal part of the aging process, but it's not. And I want to show you what those are right now. So the fifth sign that you may have insulin resistance is actually has to do with your skin and skin changes. If you're noticing that you're getting skin tags and you never really had them before, or if you had some minor skin tags, but they're growing and you might be getting more or the ones that you do have are getting enlarged, this is usually directly 
from insulin resistance and the way that your body's processing blood sugar and it needs to be addressed. So if you have some skin tags that are getting worse, that is your sign right there, even by itself. Make sure that you're getting your blood checked. And with that, anytime that you see some like darkening of your skin, like dark patches, like dark purpley areas, are just slightly different color than the rest of your skin under your armpits, around your neck, anything like that, that can be a sign that blood sugar is impacting you negatively and impacting your skin in that area. And a lot of doctors just write it off like it's a normal sign of aging, just like the skin tags, but it's not. So these are powerful clues, and the only way to know for sure is to run the right labs. When we do, the patterns are crystal clear. I can help patients definitively figure out whether they have insulin resistance by ordering the correct blood work. Let's take a look at a patient right now. This first patient, Sheila. <laughs> Sheila's in the mid-60s. And this is what I would like to call a clear case of cut and dry insulin resistance. We have a fasting blood glucose of 108, so far over 100. I remember, I, my, my cutoff here, anything over like mid 80s is starting a little on the higher end. So the fact this is over 100 when she wakes up in the morning is not off to a great start. Then the next thing that we're seeing here, you'll see that there's a, a number of inflammatory markers and liver markers that are pumped up. But we've got her A1C 6.1. So she's in that pre-diabetic category. And then the next is going to be the fasting insulin. Now, the fasting insulin at 43, I would consider this to be a severe case of insulin resistance because she doesn't have diabetes yet, but anything I would say around a five would be considered a perfect score for fasting insulin, five or below. So at a 43 fasted, like this is like, this is either one, she wasn't actually fasting, but when I talked to her, she said she was way too high. It means the body is pumping out an extraordinary amount of insulin and in doing so, I would expect if nothing changed for her A1C to go up relatively quickly. So in this case, what I would I, I recommend is, and what we do with this patient is we really worked strongly on liver health, inflammation, implementing the GLP-1, and we've seen a tremendous amount of progress for her. But I would say like this was a, this was a very cut and dry case of insulin resistance. So if you run your labs and it's looking like this, you know there's a big issue. And I, I encourage you to work closely with your provider on reversing this. Next, I want to show you Mary's labs. Mary is also in her mid 60s, closer to 70. And this was a case of insulin resistance, but not quite as obvious. And so this is one that would do most doctors would miss. So if you are a doctor yourself, this might be a video you want to encourage to show your doctor in justifying your, your own health concerns about insulin resistance. What we have here is a glucose of 96, so below 100. Most doctors aren't going to bat an eye at this. But remember, this is above my threshold of 85. So we immediately think, okay, well, that's a little on the high end. How is the A1C? Her A1C is a little high, still in the pre-diabetic category. So this is definitely an area of concern again. It's not, remember, this is something that is reversible. This is something you could find yourself back into an ideal area, 5 to 5.2, within six months to a year at this point, if you're working hand-in-hand -hand with a, a provider that knows what they're doing. The fasting insulin here, this is where it's, people are going to miss it. See this optimal scale? They just smacked her, right? Dab in the middle. They're grading her in an optimal state, and this is not an optimal state. We want to see her far closer to five and she's nearly at a 12 so 11.8 this is over double the amount of insulin production that we would want to see so the way that we work on this is obviously same with the first patient we had her on a glp1 we worked significantly on this this person we worked very tightly on their digestive health helping with food sensitivities and i believe the other crux to this case was this right here there was some Hashimoto's and a resulting free T3 at 2.5. Any The thyroid, basically the free thyroid hormone was just extraordinarily low. Her free inactive version of the hormone was also very, very low. So thyroid was a big part of this case, but most doctors would have just looked right over this fasting insulin at 11.8. So my answer to this is, is yes, this patient does have insulin resistance. I treat them very similar to the, to the first patient. Next. Interesting case, less straightforward. 71 year old patient, let's call her Jan. Most doctors will miss this every time. You got a fasting blood glucose of 79. 
So that remember, this is below 80. That appears to be perfect. Then let's take a look at our A1C, 5.3. I consider anything from 5 to 5.2 perfect. So 5.3, nothing to write home about. But remember, this Jen, Jen was a patient that came to me. She was on a GLP-1 and not losing any weight. So what was the story? So at a 13 fasting insulin, this does show signs of insulin resistance. And it means that there are reasons in her body that were contributing to this insulin resistance. Just to give you guys a heads up, with the GLP-1, I'm always after, like, I'm a huge proponent for using GLP-1 to help in this case, in all three of these women, to help the insulin receptors be more sensitive. Just being on a GLP-1, it might reduce the A1C a little bit, but it's probably not going to reduce your insulin that much. The GLP-1, and what I've seen on running countless amounts of blood work in individuals is, is that when you're on the lowest effective dosage of GLP-1, meaning that it had been a dosage that's, that's shown to be effective, at least in the recent past, to help you lose weight and maintain some level of appetite suppression, is that it will help you leverage the, the things in your life that would help reduce insulin. So more exercise, more weight-bearing activity, increasing your step count, improving your nutrition, removing inflammatory foods, working on your gut health, balancing your hormones. And by the way, all of the above we had to do with Jan will directly impact insulin. And then you have to dig deep and say, okay, what are the stressors in your life? How are you sleeping at night? Because any of these things that are impacting cortisol could be substantially changing the way that the person is handling their blood sugar, managing their blood sugar via insulin. Hopefully that makes sense for you guys. This is like a multifactorial issue. When you see this, Jan is probably the best example I have at somebody who the conventional medical system would have missed this 10 times out of 10. And yet she still needed to improve in all those areas I just discussed. She was also presenting with all five of just about of the things on this list. She had all of the fatigue in the afternoon. She was having brain fog. She had a couple skin tags. In her, in her case, she was not craving sugar anymore because she was already on a GLP-1, but everything else needed to be adjusted for her in order to achieve success, which she has. These levels have dropped significantly. Her A1C came down a little bit more. I believe it's hovering around a five. Insulin, we're still working on it. It's still, I think, at a six or seven. So if these symptoms sound familiar to you, you don't have to keep guessing. Apply to work with our team and use the link below. We'll help you run the right labs the first time and confirm whether you have insulin resistance and build a real functional medicine plan to help reverse it, not just keep it at bay with metformin or some other diabetic medication. And if you are a candidate for GLP-1 medication or you're already on it, we can show you how to use it properly and get the most out of the therapy to not just lose weight, but keep it off for good. So click below to get started in the application. If you're wanting to learn any more about functional medicine and how we assess individualized patients and take a look at labs, take a look at this video next. Take a look at a real functional medicine report, how we use GLP-1 medication and different therapies to help balance somebody out and get them a good result. Otherwise, you guys, thank you so much for watching. God bless, and I will see you guys next week. Take care.